Okay, welcome back to part two of our lecture on balance, visual weight, and symmetries. And when we just finished off, we were talking about uh, different types of symmetries. Uh, one thing I hadn't covered um, was, besides axial symmetry, there's also rotational symmetry and radial symmetry. And we'll be talking about that next. So here's another, uh, here's a drawing, just an actual physical drawing I did that kind of shows some of the same ideas of different types of axial symmetries and different types of um, radial symmetries and some where the axial symmetry is reflective and some where it's non-reflective. So here we have reflective and here we have non-reflective. Here we have where the axis is off-center and here it is off-center and um, on a diagonal. Now, rotational symmetries are defined as symmetries where instead of things repeating on either side of an axis, re they repeat going around a center point, right? So how many times around the center point is kind of uh, dependent on, um, on how you do it. I guess if you did it any less than three, it really wouldn't be uh, rotational at all. It would just be axial. Um, but the difference between rotational and radial is that radial has to also incorporate axial symmetry, right? A rotationally symmetrical design does not have to be symmetrical on any axis. Like this one is not really symmetrical on any axis. There's a somewhat of a repetition, but it's not balanced by flipping it um, on those axes. Okay, so let's see that in action. So here are some examples from nature, right? A tiger is a great example um, especially the, the head of a tiger is a great example of, of axial symmetry, right? We can imagine that center line running down the middle of it. Okay, and this plant here, the way it's spiraling out, is a great example of rotational symmetry, where we have repetition of elements going around, right, and being organized based on how, how much they repeat around the center point, but they are not symmetrical on any axes. This is a rotational symmetry that's almost radially symmetrical, Whereas, let's say, an orange, depending on how perfect the segmentation of the orange is, is pretty close to radially symmetrical, right? Because you can draw an axis right there. So normally the definition is a, a radially symmetrical composition or design has to be rotationally symmetrical and also um, radially symmetrical on at least two axes. So here's an example. One. Yet another example of axial symmetry in art, right? And as you can see, like the stuff in the background is very close to being perfectly axially symmetrical, but then the figures are a little bit more just sort of a loosely um, balanced off of that, that symmetry. And here are some examples of art of a rotational symmetry that is not radial symmetrical. And here's an example from the rose window at uh, Notre Dame Dom Cathedral. Uh, which recently had a uh, terrible, terrible fire, but the rose window did survive. And as you can see, it's uh, um, not including this part down here, right? But in the whole circle, it is both rotationally symmetrical, but also perfectly radially symmetrical on a number of axes. I think at least six axes. Um, so there you go. That is the end of the lecture on balance. Um, next, I'll be talking with you about color, the basics of color. All right, see you then.